if we do have to change the bearings, we're going to have to take our transition piece off first. Once we take off our transition piece off, if you could kind of come over onto this side, you're going to see a couple bolts here. And there's a couple bolts here. So essentially what ends up happening with this to get this apart, and if you could kind of pan into here too. So this is two separate pieces if you can kind of vision it. And how we can envision it is this top piece to here where these bolts are right here. If we, if we took these three right here off, this is going to allow us to take half of this this way in order for us to be able to remove not only the bearings, well the bearings could come off by unloosing them here and there's a locking collar on this side. Once we have it loosened here, this will allow us to pull this bearing off. For safety aspects of it, you could come in with a strap where you have a come along or if you have a Jeep, a fork truck, where you could put the strap on the center of our rotor to hold that in place for safety aspects because once we take this, remove this, this bearing here, it's going to want to drop a little bit. So we could pick it up here, remove this bearing here, come over to this side. We have our Omega coupling and two metal couplings. The two metal couplings are being attached by the Omega coupling which is are attaching our motor to our rotor through the Omega coupling. So we remove the bearing on that side. We're gonna go ahead and remove these bolts for the Omega coupling. Once the Omega coupling is off, that's breaking us from being attached from the motor to the rotor. Once we have that free, usually there might be some space in between here. If not, the thing that you're gonna have to do is loosen your motor. And you can either loosen your motor to a sense where you can leave one as a pivot point to where you can pivot it to get it away so that you're gonna have the room to get this bearing off of that shaft. Also be in, keep in mind that there are shims that are installed on the feet of the motor in the factory and this is done when we do our laser alignment and we, we get rid of soft foot as well too. So if you do have to do the bearing changes, make sure that we're make, uh, keeping track of what shims are on what foot and the location if you have to make a mark and try to keep those shims in that space so that way when you're going back to reinstall them you know they're going back in the same exact location. So once we get our motor loose and we have our pivot point here we could simply shift it or if you want to just remove the whole motor that's uh, fine as well too. Once that motor gets removed and now we have the proper space we're able to take this bearing off. Now we have our rotor braced here with either a strap or whatever we came up with that you have at your specific factory. Once we have that stabilized and now we have our parts removed and bolts removed to kind of get the body apart from one another. Once we get the body to where it's opened and now we can re simply remove the, the, the rotor because now we have the bearings off and we're gonna have nothing obstructing us from sliding it off. Now what's gonna happen is one of these walls, these back walls is not gonna come off. What's going to end up happening is you're going to, it's going to be, if you can envision this, this back wall here and these pieces that run along this part of the body and the top piece. So once we get these parts removed in the body, this piece over here, you'll see, is going to come this way. So once that, this, this wall here, talking about this non-drive side wall, is attached here on this side and on that side and as far as like up here on these bodies which I explained to you the bolts over here that's all gonna slide off this way once that slides off that way then we're able to take the rotor and get it out of the body because this ball here will not come off and it does it's gonna stay stationary once you loosen all the other components to get the body apart from one another to get the rotor out when removing any types of bolts or anything like that, it's good practice to make sure you have a bag or a tray or something to collect. 
Obviously, what we try to uh, do as well too is we try to take pictures of things before we start taking them apart. So that way, if you do come across, well, where did this come from or why do I have this bolt or this bolt, you kind of know where they kind of came from and kind of label things so that putting it back together is just going to be a little bit easier. We also have our in our manuals prints and everything that you can reference to for everything that I'm kind of going over as far as how to take this apart or you could simply give us a call as well too. We could go over it with you as well too if it's not making sense.